in the previous video we keep talking about the number of poles and zeros for example the number of poles that is within encircled in this contour we call this the s contour right and then the number of poles and zeros if it's in within this then we can have a certain understandings all right and therefore in this video we are going to introduce you with the Nyquist contour and as you know that this is actually the S contour governed by S is equals to R e j theta which is also equals to R cosine theta plus j sine theta if you remember and uh, R j sine theta sorry and we, s we say that if for example R is 5 then in fact this is representing this contour right now with a radius 5 right this radius 5 over here okay and therefore now we're gonna redefine this contour and we define this contour because we know that any poles and zeros that is within this this um, right half plane is considered unstable and therefore we are going to look at it in terms of the unstable stuffs and in order to do that all right instead of having this contour right now I'm going to draw the contour in terms of this shape that can cover all the right half plane right half plane that this this half semicircle the radius is infinity all right so in in, in other words s is equals to r e j theta in this case the r is infinity and the intervals if you remember in the first very first video of the playlist is from 0 to um, minus 2 pi all right however in this in this video or in this contour, I'll not go into details on how to derive this contour, but we are just talking about this contour straight away. Alright, if you want to go on, then I'll just attach a video in the next playlist if you want to watch how to derive the contour. Okay, but however, in, in, in this con in this Nyquist contour, alright, it is taking from from J because S is equals to real plus imaginary, and in, in this line itself, this imaginary is in fact um, it's just in terms of the imaginary axis, there's no real axis so we can say that s is equal to j omega and from minus infinity to infinity so this is one interval and then the next interval is from from um, uh, what, uh, from infinity to zero and then the next quarter is from zero to negative infinity so there is three intervals I would say but we're gonna, we, no, we are not going to derive that contour Alright, but just to, s to give you the intuition that how the contour is being taken um, into, co um, into considerations and that we from now on in the Nyquist contour right now in this contour right now we are going to talk about Nyquist contour and the plot and the number of poles and zeros within this when you plot inside this we call this the um, transfer function domain in this case we are calling it a Nyquist plot and this is where the Nyquist plot comes in okay and also we're gonna redefine this term right here alright instead of encircle the S contour alright which is which is this one or in other words the circle the circle over here this one this is the S contour right we're gonna redefine as the Nyquist contour which is the semicircle so we can say that this is Nyquist contour and then encircle instead of the g instead of the origin we're gonna say that is encircling minus one the reason is because if you remember if i go on i'll just say that the number of poles encircled by the s contour is also changed to nyquist contour okay because the poles and zeros are, are somewhat in the contour itself which is in this contour so this is the nyquist contour whatever thing that is inside all any point this point this point this point this point any random points within this is considered inside the Nyquist contour all right now we're going to talk about this this why is it minus um, why is it minus one if we remember the um the open loop transfer function is kg all right open loop transfer function is equals to kg or in other words kg Alright, if you close the loop, it's considered kg1 plus kg. 
right? And this is the characteristic equation if you remember. And if this is equals to zero, then the whole equation will go to infinity, which means that the closed loop system will be unstable, which we don't want. Alright, so we want to analyze when is it going to zero. And therefore we are interested in the characteristic equation. Where this is in fact g of s also multiplied by some constant k. Okay. So therefore, if that's the case, then if I were to bring my one over the other side, so it's equals to minus one. And this minus one is in fact the minus one that is talk talking about in this thing. So if you have a minus one encirclement, then this means that you are actually encircling, you are actually defining that the kg itself is unstable. Because this relationship states that 1 plus kg is equals to 0. If that's the case, then if it, uh, it is 1, why am I, why am I talking? <laughs> alright, if the transfer function all right, is near to minus 1, all right, if this is minus one, the whole thing will become unstable. So we want to, we want to sum this minus one, or we want to dodge, or we don't want to go near minus one because if it's minus one, it's going to be more and more unstable, and this is why we don't want to do that. And therefore, here's the Nyquist thing. And therefore, in this Nyquist example, we are now talking about Nyquist. Okay. Why is because this S domain now instead of S contour, which is the circle that we drawn, now we are talking about a contour as a Nyquist contour, that the radius itself cover all the right half plane. The radius is all R. I mean infinity. All right, it's it's really big. All right, so we're gonna take all those points and plot it over here. But because there is no poles and zeros, because after you you rearrange the transfer function right this is the transfer function this is the constant k and this is the g or in other words this is the feedback system i would say where feedback system is one sorry so this is not this is not uh this is not k this is simply the feedback system for example g h of s all right so taking that the the feedback is one then the transfer function itself is simply 250 and then I've, I solve for the roots to find the poles because there is no zeros over here. And if I do that, I'll have a two conjugate poles over here. Correct? And these two poles are not within this contour. And therefore, there is zero because I, we know that there is zero zeros, right? In 250, there's only one number, so there's no like s plus 250. Alright? So this is just 250. And therefore, zero, there is no zero in this transfer function and we know that there is no pole inside the contour also right the pole is not inside this contour so this is zero and therefore we will have no encirclement on the negative one so from here as you can see it's going in this direction but it's way too small so if we were to zoom in all right if we were to zoom in this is the negative one Alright, and where, where do we zoom in? Okay, we are actually zooming into this portion over here. Okay, if you were to zoom in, then it's just this one. Okay, where the negative one is simply over here. And as you can see, the this thing is it's very near to negative one, but yet it didn't encircle, it didn't go over to this side. Alright, it didn't encircle it. And therefore we can say that this is still considered stable. Or in other words, in this case, there is no encirclement, and therefore n is equal to zero also, lah. In other sense, because it didn't encir it's the number of clockwise encirclement on the negative one. Because there is no encirclement, then it's also considered stable. All right, but this is not exactly the defined way to to define stability. The defined way to define stability is if z, the z, the number of zero in the con Nyquist contour is is not larger than zero so if it's larger than zero in this case then it is unstable but why is it z why because if z is equals to m plus p why are we focusing on zero and not talking about this anymore right the and the purpose of me talking about this is because um 
be wondering there is so many emphasis on the encirclement on the negative one alright but why end up we are talking about the number of zeros in this case because we can straight away know the zeros or in other words okay let me show you an example in order to show you the example we will show you in terms of equations alright if you remember the open loop tensor function is equal to the number of zeros divided by the number of poles alright for the closed loop system if it's a closed loop then it's just um, z over p which is the forward loop divided by 1 plus zp correct this is just simply g of s and this is simply 1 plus g of s so this thing still goes back to the feedback system g of s this is open loop which is the transfer function over here z over p while if you, if you feedback, back then this is the transfer function gs over 1 plus gs which is very familiar to you in the past right? and we have to re rewrite this we'll have z over p is equals to um, p plus z over p correct so in this form is often being represented in systems alright system outputs because if you were to close loop it when you, f when you measure the output it's always in terms of a polynomial on top this, this thing is considered closed loop zero right because it's at the numerator right now then this one is considered the closed loop pose Oops. <laughs> closed loop pose alright so the information a actually has been lost alright the zero the information on the zero has been lost because this is the open loop zero correct but along the way if you close the loop your, ans your answer is your measurements is in terms of z divided by p so z is divided by p you can't actually find the exact value for z anymore right but you don't know anything about z anymore right? so our, our objective is to find the closed loop zero and in this case we cannot look at here anymore the closed loop zero is totally invisible because due to this all, all this little stuff that actually con um, so called corrupted the, the, the values of zeros but however we do have the understanding of the poles this pole itself is still the open loop poles which is over here and this is why if we can if we know the open loop poles and then we, we measure the system output and plot it on the Nyquist plot Alright, the Nyquist plot, and then if it encircles this thing, if it encircles one time in the clockwise, this means that s is n is equals to one, and we know that if poles, for example, for this system, this open loop system, the the number of poles is simply is equals to two, then m plus p is equals to one plus two, which is equals to three. So we know that the closed loop zero now is three. In fact which is 3 is larger than 0 and therefore unstable or in other words this, this thing is in the number of 0 is 3 right and this 3 is simply z in our in our formula z equals to equals to m plus p correct so this z is the number of 0 in the right half plane correct which is inside this um, which is inside this this right half plane so you have three zeros somewhere we don't know yet but we, we know that there is three zeros and therefore we can say that this system is unstable all right three the number of there is three zeros closed loop zeros which is unstable and therefore we can alter by changing the closed loop system all right so we can change the closed loop system the values over here um, or whatever the or, or the open loop poles and zeros so when we change the num the value on zeros and poles we can redefine the whole closed loop transfer function this is the open loop transfer function this is the whole this is the closed loop if we can redefine the closed loop transfer function and eventually um, do what we have just done earlier and get the number of zero that is in the right half plane is equals to zero then we can say that our system is safe if you don't know what I mean, 
the next video will explain or otherwise you can click back the previous minute or few a few minutes ago then you can just rewatch until you finally understand all right but i'll just continue with the next video for a few examples so you'll know what i mean i shall see you there